In this video, we are farming iron ingots in Inhibit's Industrial Incorporated. Hello everyone, my name is Inhibit and I hope that you're all having a great day today. In the last video, we made this right here which is just a part of our cozy little starter house. In between episodes, I found an amazing fortress and I got 4 wither skeleton skulls. Obviously, after that, I defeated the wither. Now, the problem with having a nether star or well a beacon is that I don't have nearly enough resources to build a full beacon pyramid. To fix this problem, the first thing we're going to do in this episode is build an iron farm. You may have noticed last episode, but yeah, we have some villagers here and I plan on pacifying at least one of these guys so that we can make a quadruple iron farm. Now the question is, where are we going to put this quadruple iron farm? And the answer to that is right here. Welcome folks to the start of my industrial district that we are going to be calling the Inhibit Industrial Incorporated. Do I need to sing the name of this place every single time? Maybe. Anyways, this is going to be the place where we are putting our quadruple iron farm and also pretty much all the other farms that are not biome specific. I'm gonna need one of these guys for the iron farm, so that's super convenient. Get in the boat. Boat, boat, boat. Aww. Now that we have this guy, I think the next thing that we should do is clean this place up a bit, so I'll see you in a bit. Alright, I realized through the wiki that you don't actually need a full beacon to instamine terracotta, so this right here should make this job a whole lot quicker. Now, the beacon definitely made this job a lot quicker, but it definitely was not fast. After a while, we have cleared out the whole perimeter for Inhibits Industrial Incorporated. And now, it's time for me to take on the painstaking task of planning where all the farms will go. Alright, so I'm in the middle of planning, right? And then Justin just comes up to me and places these four blocks right here. And just goes, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alright, as you can see here, not much has really changed. Because my brain just can't handle all of this information. Anyways, I've decided to divvy up this industrial district into three sub-districts. Namely, the main sub-district, the villager sub-district, and the flying machine sub-district. As of now, we only have the villager sub-district planned out. And it will have a couple of pathways and also our iron farm, a villager breeder and converter in one building, and a couple of trading halls. Alright, so I decided that this will be the entrance to this place. Um, I don't want this place to be super automatic. I want it to be a bit immersive. So everything in this place will have its own little storage system so that whenever I want to grab something, I'm going to need to walk throughout the place. Another thing that I should mention is that for the time being, everything here will look very, very ugly and everything here will only be for function. But in the future, I want to make this whole thing sort of follow a theme, sort of an industrial theme that would make this place look cool. And then we'd also make some cool looking pathways and kind of just make a bit of an industrial town to go with it. Anyways, as I said earlier, this is the villager district. And we are going to have an iron farm right here. A patrol came up and so I got another pillager much closer to where he needs to be. And yeah, this is where an iron farm is going, our iron farm is going to be. And then over here, we have some space for a villager breeder and converter and also a couple of trading halls. Now, I still want a couple of villager based farms that didn't quite fit in the villager sub district. And so they're going to be bleeding into the main sub district. And they are namely the villager crop farms that I can't really fit anywhere in this villager district. Anyways, pretty much most of the villager district has been planned out. And so I think the next step is getting some villagers in here and making a new villager breeder just so that we have some villagers to work with in this area. We now have a villager reader as you can see right here and well it's pretty much the exact same design as the one in the spawn village all the way a thousand blocks over there and yeah it's a design by Logical Geek Boy. Um, again the link to his video about the villager reader will be in the description below. Now 
I did modify it a little bit. As you can see, the offshoot here is a bit to the side because I wanted to make it so that you can kind of see these stages of the life of a villager. Um, we have here the baby stage, and then we have here the adult stage, and then we have here the zombie stage because I plan to add in a zombie in here. However, at the moment, I can't really do that because the server kind of reset and stuff, and so, well, not necessarily reset, but there was kind of a server restart or something along those lines, and the difficulty right now is on easy, and it's super rare to get a zombie to pick up an item such as this diamond axe right here, which has Unbreaking 3. So that he can do quicker go to the villagers. So yeah, I'm gonna be waiting for hard mode to come around again. And yeah. Anyways, as you can see, it's pretty ugly. It's just stone, a couple pieces of glass where I kind of want it to be in the main design. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyways, as you can see here, we have a couple more villagers. I kind of just separated four from here. Put them in this little breeding pit just so that they can multiply very quickly. And we now have... 12 villagers that we can use for our iron farm right here all right let's crack on with the iron farm as you can see here the iron farm is now done this right here is a nembon design and i followed speed's block by block tutorial to make this farm like any other farm that i built that isn't my own design i will leave their links in the description below anyways i've been afk here for one hour and this is what i got and honestly that's pretty good however it doesn't actually get the suggested rates, obviously. This is just one part of Nembon's design, so it definitely won't get that rates. But even if you divide it by 5, we're not really getting rates. However, as you can see here, I've just noticed that that might be a problem. I don't know how many times or how often that happens, but if that is a reoccurring problem, then we might have lost a lot of stuff for the first hour that I went AFK. Like I said, this is what I got for the first hour. That's very good. That's two stacks of iron blocks, and yeah. In case you were wondering what this farm looks like, it looks like this. We just have a pillager, a pacified pillager just right there. We have a lightning rod right here, just so no one turns into witches. And yeah, just four villager pods right here. I've tested this, and at night, they can get into their beds and all that and all that. So yeah, this works pretty well, and it definitely works a lot better than just one singular iron farm. But yeah, um, I'm gonna see if I can do anything to make it better, but for now, I think we should start by figuring out this problem. It's gonna be as simple as a couple of stairs, so we should do that now. Alright, so these stairs are now in place, and can I just mention this glitch just right here? When I open it, the animation closes, and when I close it, the animation opens. Okay, that's pretty weird, but anyways, that's now fixed up, so I'll be doing a little bit more AFK here just to see if that makes a huge difference. Anyways, in other news, we still have the villager breeder, however, I'm not actually sure if it still works, because it might be treating that as the same village. I'm pretty sure it needs to be around, like, maybe like 64 blocks away. Not sure about the exact numbers, I'm gonna try moving it over that way if it still doesn't work out, and then... If I move it that way and still doesn't work, then I'll probably be moving it over there and change up our plans for this area. I mean, plans aren't really nailed down, so yeah, it's we're pretty flexible right now. But once we start getting a lot more farms in here, it's going to be a lot harder to be flexible with where all the farms go. Anyways, for now, let's go back to the spawn village so that I can catch you guys up on a couple of community projects that's been happening. Back at the village now, and I want to introduce you guys to a new community project started by this man right here, who is at the project right now, hard at work. We have here Project Revillage. So what is Project Revillage? As you can see here, uh, Justin, a server member, is, well, making a house. There wasn't a house there before, and... As you can see, we have a church here. There was a church here before, but now it looks a lot better. That house over there? Yeah. The same style house was here before. But now, it's a beautiful inn. Cowpen that was here? It's a beautiful cowpen. Ravine that was here? Gone. The well that was here? It's now a beautiful well with a bell. That rhymed. Direct house that was here? It's beautiful now. Farm? Beautiful. We even have a blacksmith now. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the smoke. The whole place is just a lot more beautiful. It looks a lot better like this. And yeah, it is a project, like I said, started by Justin, the person that was here. 
Oh, he wasn't content with the door. Door. Anyways, yeah, he started this. Now, you heard me right. This is a community project, which means, well, pretty much everyone can and, well, everyone will work on it. Oh. No. Now you might be asking yourselves, what am I going to be contributing to this place? Well, I have an answer to that. And it's, uh, this. This stuff. You see this? Boom. Custom tree right there. You see this? Yeah, boom, custom tree. You see this right here? Another one. Yeah, I know. I like trees, all right? And so that's what my contribution to this place will be. I'm going to be building a lot of custom trees, and I'm going to be doing my best to do a bit of greenery. As you can see here, Justin has actually started on a lot of greenery, and yeah, I mean, it looks great, so he might have that down, but I will definitely be adding some custom trees around this place to really liven it up. However, this is not the only community project that we have. If I fly over Mendel's treehouse right here, you can see a pretty big thing. I may have shown this in a past episode. I'm pretty sure I have, but I didn't really talk about it. But this right here is the foundation of Castle El Dolphin, I think is what they're calling it. Anyways, this arch right here was made by me. So, you know, I'm going to be helping out here as well, at least a little bit, at least a little bit. I'm not really sure what he wants us to do with this place. I kind of want to just wait for him to start something and then we can just add on to that so that, you know, the whole thing kind of, the whole style of the place will kind of go with what he had in mind. As you can see here, we will have yet another custom tree. All right then. We have a couple of custom trees to build, so I think we should get to building. Alright then, some time has passed and I have built a couple of custom trees, except for this one right here. As you can see here, this courtyard is very small. For such a huge castle, this is a very small courtyard and I might need to talk to Mendel about this one because I'm not sure if a tree looks right in this very small courtyard. Anyways, onto the village, as you can see right there, oh, speed boost, as you can see right here, we have one custom tree, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty cute one, especially with this, um, you know, we even have a lantern here hanging down from the tree. Moving on from that tree, we also have this tree right here, and a pretty big tree in the background. Anyways, this small tree right here turned out pretty much exactly the same as that one, well, not exactly, but... It looks pretty much the same. We have a trunk that kind of curves in to go into this dip right here. And yeah, we have tons of leaves and also some lanterns. And then finally, we have this massive tree right here. Yes, I tried my best to make a much bigger tree than the other ones to kind of mix it up a bit. And yeah, I kind of like how it turned out. I mean, it's not that great. Not so good at making big trees, but hey. I think it looks fine, maybe it's like a different species, a tree maybe, and I wanted to make a big tree here because, you know, the church is here, and I don't know, I kind of just pictured a big tree behind a church, and also, we have the cow pen, and, um, well, in a previous episode, I told you that I farmed everything in this village, and that was including the cows, and now they're living happily ever after, actually, you can't breed them, and so now I can't farm them. But I kind of feel sorry for all of their family members that I've farmed, so I made this little gravestone where it says, Here lies, like, 70 cows that I killed. Alright, that's pretty much it for Revillage right now. Uh, we will definitely be revisiting this project. Um, definitely not done with it just yet. However, while we are in the area, let us name this little guy right here. So, if you guys remember, in the last video, I asked you guys to name my little axolotl here, and I got a name. Alright, didn't expect that, but I do have a name now, and that's what we're gonna be calling it. My axolotl will be called Bill. I'm gonna be honest here, this is not the axolotl that I caught in that one clip in the video. This this axolotl is actually a pink axolotl. So we now have, well, actually, I think it's more or less the white one, but it's definitely not the same color as the one I showed you guys. But anyways, this is now our axolotl bill. Anyways, that's going to be it for this area right now. Let's go back to Inhibits Industrial Incorporated.
All right, we are back at Inhibits Industrial Incorporated. Yes, I'm not singing it anymore. I have been singing it far too many times. Anyways, when I left this place, I had the iron farm and have actually been AFK here a lot. And yeah, I think uh, this other double chest is yeah just started getting filled and this spider is now harassing me. Anyways, we're gonna need a bit of a change of plans here because as you can see here, our villager breeder is not working well. And well, actually, it's not working at all. So I think it's because these beds are interacting with those beds and villages and, you know, villager and bed ratios. And that's why they don't want to breed. And so I think that we're going to need to change the plan. All right. So currently, our plan is like this, as I am presenting on the screen right now. And it is the plan with some sub-districts. However, I think that I'm going to be ditching the sub-districts and doing this whole plan all over again. Now, I don't want to move the iron farm because of how much hassle that will cost me. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to nail the iron farm where it is right now, maybe make it a little bit bigger, and then move everything else that we've built already to a different place so that everything works properly. So instead of sub-districts, I've decided to lay down the main paths of the whole entire industrial district just so that I know where all the big buildings can go and also in the future if I need some smaller buildings then I can easily make some smaller paths. As of now we are not changing the entrance of our industrial district it's still where I decided it to be but there will now be a pathway going all the way across to the very end making a cross section at the middle of the square right here centered around the mob farm. After that, at a pretty awkward corner of the industrial district, we will have a smaller path running across to the very other side just so that we have easy access to everything. That is it for now. The villager beater and converter will probably be somewhere around here and we'll also have a couple of villager trading halls. Trading halls just dotted around the place so that we can get all the items that we want. Alright, that right there is the plan for Inhibits Industrial Incorporated, so I think we should get cracking on to moving this villager reader right here all the way over to that corner. Alright then, so we have moved the villager reader from all the way over there to right here. I just took that one down and rebuilt it here, and it is now working properly as you can see here. Again, this is Logical Geek Boy's design, so his link will be in the description below. Anyways. Right here, we have a zombie villager converting system. Now, this is my own design. However, it is highly inspired by Chapman, so the link to his video will be in the description below. It's just an oversimplified version of it. I'm not sure if this has any disadvantages, but yeah, I guess we'll see after I use this for quite a good while. And then behind me, we have two of our villager trading halls. It's a pretty simple design villager is going to be in here he can't get out because he's too tall for this and then the workstation will be in here so that he can reset his trades and then that's pretty much just all over the place now we will have two more villager readers right here which or villager trading halls right here which will be very very long so you know for the more grindy trades such as the librarians and stuff they will probably be going here and also this right here is only a one-sided villager trading hall because, well, the wall of the industrial district is going to be right here. So I can't really fit a path over here. So I just decided to make it one-sided. But this one right here is going to be two-sided. So yeah, this one will also be two-sided. Okay, let me give you guys a pretty quick demonstration on how this works. So we put our minecarts into here so that we can transport all of our villagers. And then we click this button right here to send a villager to the zombie villager converter. And then over here, we have our villager and the zombie right behind him. Obviously, the zombie behind him can't actually hit him, so that's what we and that's what we want, right? And now, we have a choice. We can either just send him to the hall directly, which won't give him any discounts, or we can start converting him. If we want to send him to the hall, then we can do that. But in this case, I want to convert him. If I want to convert him, I still have a choice. It's either I can cycle his trades now, or convert him before I start cycling his trades. Either way, when we click convert here and hide behind this pillar right here, in just a little bit, he will get converted. And then over to our little brewing setup right here, we can grab some bottles from that chest. And then this is right here is a waterlogged 
upstairs so we can still grab water even though you can't actually visibly see the water in there. And then from there you can grab the three of these, one of each of the ingredients, and then put the bottles of water into the brewing stand, and then put the ingredients into here in this exact order, the fermented spider eye, let it go in, and then the gunpowder. So pretty much what happens here is after this is done, the gunpowder will go straight in and finish this up. Anyways, after that, we can store all of our potions in here, and then we also can store our golden apples in there. And then we can just splash him, and then feed him our golden apple, and we wait for a little bit. After a while, we will have a villager right here, and as you can see there, we just got the advancement for the zombie doctor. And so, this man right here should now give us some discounts for his trades. And as you can see here, that is indeed the case. We have a couple of discounts for his trades right here. Anyways, that's pretty much it. If I am content with the prices that he has given me, then I can just go on ahead, send him to the villager trading hall. But in my case, I want to uh, convert him for a couple more times just so that he gives me a lot lower prices, possibly even one carrot for one emerald, which is extremely overpowered. But hey, that's what we are here for. Anyways, that is all that I have time for for this video. Uh, I really enjoyed this video. I focused on the farms today as last episode we kind of focused on building and yeah this place right here looks quite ugly but don't worry about that. Uh, we'll be fixing that in the future episodes. Anyways that's all for me today folks. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video I hope that you are all having a great day and I hope that watching this video made it a better one. See ya!